Okay. <clears throat> I feel like I'm stuck in storybook forest. I am stuck in storybook forest and I don't like it. I want out. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Pose Season 3, Episode 5. As I said, I feel as though I'm stuck in storybook forest. This is not, this is not, I repeat, this is not what I fell in love with this show. So I'm going to say... I'm going to enjoy the rest of this season, but I'm going to probably say it's time. It, it is time. I think it's ran its course. I think it's ran its course and it actually is time for the show to go. Um, again, po I said it last week. Pose is a period piece. It is, it tells the story of a specific time period. And I think we've pretty much, we told the story and now we're just making shit up. And that ain't what this is about. That was never what this was about. So um, yeah, it's probably time, to, it's time to go, it's time to go. Yeah, so I'm pretty much, I'm done fighting with the, oh, I wish it would stay, I wish it would stay, cause no. Last episode and then this episode, Storybook Force. This is very soap opera-ish, very dynasty, very... And then wait a minute, let me give you this. I felt like I was watching an episode of Good Times. And I ain't here for that at all. I felt like I was watching Good Times. If you've ever watched Good Times... Listen, Good Times, you it was on for a half hour. For 22 minutes, oh, let's take it back now, maybe 17 minutes, everything was always going real, real good. Everything's going real, real good, and it looks like um, things are getting ready to change for the Evans family, and then all in the last five minutes, things just fall apart and it's like, nope, we still here. But we happy, we happy to be here, but we still here. And that's how I felt. I was like, so everything's going, it was like literally every commercial break, I felt like, okay, so we're in the bottom gonna fall out. Okay, so when is the reality gonna kick in? And that's how I felt. And that just ain't good. That That's not, that ain't what I fell in love with Pose for. But whatever. Anyway, let's go. Let's let's go here. Um, of course, the music is always good. Um, we see Miss Orlando, child. Miss Orlando done hooked up our girl, Electra with the fellas. With the fellas, baby. That's, that's who they are. The mob, honey. The fellas, that's what I'm going to call them. The fellas. She hooked him up with the fellas and brought her into this whole money laundering thing. So they're running drugs and things through the through her business, through her, her call center business and um, cleaning up the, the money. So, and I was laughing because there was a song that was playing in the background. A song, I used to love this song. It used to play in the club, honey. Money talks. Money talks, dirty cash, I want you, dirty cash, I need you, oh. That used to be the jam. That used to be the jam. And they used to play that, they used to play that at the club here all the time. But that was the jam, honey. Mm -hmm. That used to be the jam. Anyway, so, um, I said, money laundering through Okay, I said this before. Back at 94, like 1994. Yeah, I, I could see the type of girl that 
Electra is. I could see her being mixed up with the mob, but not so much directly like this. I could see her having a client who has a taste for a little something extra and he working with her. But on this type of business, probably not. If, pro if we were going to do the reality of things, the way things would go, she would have been running a club like the Hellfire Club. She would have been a, a madame, honey. And they would have been selling booty. And, she, and they running drugs through the house. Very much. And then the crack, and this, we talk about the crack era too. Oh yeah. This is no different than, than the girls up in the projects. How the boys link up to the girls in the projects and they cook their crack and 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 run their little crack business out of these girls' departments in the projects. Same thing, but just on an upper scale, she would have been running a whorehouse. She would have been running a whorehouse. They would have been selling booty and, and, and everything else, like 40 going north and laundering the money out of there. It would have been, everything would have been totally off the chain. She would have had protection and all of that. But see, what you have to understand, even back then, honey, with the mob and the Italians, honey, they they don't feel you like that. You're black ass. You're black gay trans ass like that. You would have protection as long as you was protecting their thing. But the reality of everything is that if things went left, you be on your own. If things went left the wrong way, they dispose of you themselves. That's the reality of things. Yes, I said it. I said it. So look, they could play any game they want to play with the show. When you come over here to Treasure Lane, to Spill It Boy TV and where I reside, I'm going to give you the real from what I know from walking through these streets. That's all I can do. So this here fairy tale, fairy tale story they tell it, bullshit, bullshit. So yeah, it's time for this show to go. It's time to go. It's been fun, Ryan, but it's time to go. Anyway, so let's just go on. Um, so that's the thing. All right. So um, this is where the issue was coming in for me. As the storyline goes. Electra is living her best life. She is wealthy. She has money. She didn't have anything she wants. She just find little piece, honey. And she, but she bought him. You know, he wasn't nothing but a gigolo. You know, she's like chocolate, so forth and so on. He was cute, but again, nothing but a whore. He was paid for. Um, she redid Blanca's whole complete place. She told Lulu, "Girl, mother's gonna take care of all of you, honey." She's going to take care of all of you. And what I have for you is an all-expense-paid trip to rehab, honey. And Lulu's giving, oh, no, she's snapping out because she's in denial. Lulu told her she got a hold on uh, her whole thing and that it was Candy's passing that threw her into it. But now she got it together. But she got this new man, all of that. We know what all that looks like. You're lying. You're lying. You still getting high, bitch. You still getting high, and you got this guy. As soon as they, she said his name, he he. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. But okay, Lulu, whatever. Messing around. Um, I have this really, really bad feeling in my gut. We're gonna lose Lulu before. We're gonna lose Lulu before this is all over. Um, but yeah, she's in denial. So that is what it is. Um, then we had this whole thing with Poppy and Angel. And they're talking about the wedding and they're like, we're going to get married. So that was her announcement. We're going to get married. Um, we're going to get married on New Year's Eve and all of this. Of course, they're like, you know, we got some money saved up. We're going to do it really simple. It's just going to be, you know, family and we're going to go ahead. We're going to go. They're, they're talking about City Hall. And see, this is another part. Fantasy Island, honey. City Hall, 94. In 94, we were still doing mock weddings. It wasn't legal. We were still doing mock weddings. So nobody's going to City Hall 
Where's this bullshit coming from? And as it is bullshit. Now, back in 94, yes, I've done gowns and things for gay weddings. They were mock weddings. They're mock weddings. Even in the church. I've done a gown for one of my girlfriends. Full on white wedding gown, bridesmaids, bam, the whole nine yards. Wedding in the church. Uh, reception at a hall, the whole nine yards. But it is a mock wedding. It wasn't a legal wedding. It was a mock wedding. I've seen how many weddings of two lesbians, a double, a double tux wedding. No, this is nothing new. We've been doing this. We've been pledging love to one another. It became legal when Barack was running everything, and everything went in. And it was, but that wasn't back in 94. In 94, we were still doing mock weddings. So that whole storyline about we're going to go to City Hall, bullshit. I call bullshit. Don't play these games. This is stupid. This is stupid because that's not what was going on. Follow what was going on. It's a mock wedding. Cool, no problem. But you're not going to City Hall. Stop playing. Anyway, moving on. Um, Electra offer to pay for everything and give Angel her dream wedding. She had whatever gown she want and all of that. That's what she said she was doing for her. And Poppy had a fit. Poppy told her, no, this is my wedding. And it feels like she's making me look like a fool. Like I can't take care of my bride. So it's like it's downplaying me as a man. And then he went down to see Electra. Baby, he's getting Electra together. And Electra told him, boy, shut up. Up, Hattie. She just listened to him. You know, she liked Poppy. So she just listened to him and she took it easy on him. Then she explained to him the importance of letting Angel live the fantasy. If you really love my baby the way you say you do, let her live the fantasy because it really is this whole wedding and it being the way it is. And us stunting like this is more about the ballroom than just you two. It's more, it's you're letting the other girls know. One. You're giving them this in their face, honey. But you're also letting them know you can live the fantasy as well. Things are moving on, even though things really weren't moving on. Things were moving on for her. But, you know, it is what it is. So he's like, oh, okay. And then she told, well, you know, it really is tradition. If you follow the tradition, it's tradition for the girl's family to pay for the wedding anyway. So that was that. So Poppy said, okay. She said, if you want to, you can buy the flowers and the rice, child. And he's like, oh, okay, cool, no problem. Shall we love Poppy? Anyway, moving on. So um, then we had this whole scene where they go and they're trying on these, trying on wedding gowns. They go down to this wedding parlor, this swanky little wedding parlor. A little cute little guy named Dominic is in there helping them. And they're tr and um, we got Angel trying on gowns. And baby, they was in there, they jamming again, baby. This time they're playing. The B-52s, honey, Miss Lady, Miss Kier, honey, give it one, two, three, blue, 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 blue. groove is in the heart, getting down. I said, oh, na, 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 child, they was playing all the jams. I was like, come on, Lady, Miss Kier, get down. So we, I'm in there getting down, getting down, but. They trying on gowns, and that's when she said, everybody try on gowns. Let's all get gowns. So they had a whole montage of them trying these beautiful dresses on. And child, listen, listen. That damn uh, Electra had this bias cut draped gown, uh, silk. I said, girl, if you don't quit playing, so clean, so clean. Anyway, so then... We finally get Angel. She chooses a gown. She says, okay, fine. So they all want to get their gowns that they chose. Blanca, Angel, and Electra. Of course, you know that bill was going to be real hefty. Charlie says, let me go and get the owner, and he'll be so excited. So she little show the room stylist. Dominic goes and gets the owner. Baby, the owner pulls it. Now, this was more of a real thing going on. But he came out and told them, what? Wedding gowns are for women. 
real women. And these designers put work in their imagination into these pieces. And I wouldn't be caught dead selling them to you. I said, oh, no, he didn't. And honey, that goddamn Electra took him and read his ass to the ground. To the ground. Now, here we go with the real versus the fake and the fantasy. Would have never happened. It would have never happened. They would have never even been in that store that long trying on dresses back in 94. It wouldn't have happened. You could have gone in and you, and I just and I'll tell you just being a drag queen. See, I make clothes. So I don't have a whole bunch of issues, but I've had there are stores that knew me and I could actually could try things on and there are stores that you couldn't try things on and I'm talking 94 doing drag you could and I'm not a trans woman I'm just a drag queen there are stores where I had to actually just buy things and you know you do whatever you want to do with them but you couldn't actually try them on in the store but then there were other stores that were cool that was back in 94 it was back in my pageant days so no but that type of a high-end boutique, no. There wouldn't have been any trans women hanging out, drinking champagne, and trying on dresses. No, that wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened because remember, they're not, they're not cast to be like undetectable girls. Like Angel. Angel might have got away with it, but Electra and... Blanca, not at all. Not at all. Wouldn't have happened. So that's more of the fairy tale. And her standing there reading that man, baby, the police would have been called and they would have been hauled away. Probably, probably would have went to jail, honey, for disturbing the fucking peace, honey. That's the reality of it in New York City in 1994. Stop playing. It just, you know what I mean? It. Listen, kids, life ain't fair. It just is what it is. And I'm talking... I'm speaking to you, you all know that. I'm speaking to you from a place I know what I'm talking about. I'm not speaking to you about what I think. I'm speaking to you about what I know, what I've lived, what I've walked through. And I've done, listen, David's bridal, Dave, and that's the thing about David's bridal. Everybody don't realize. David's bridal, people laugh when they say David's bridal. And, oh, David's bridal, like it's always this cheap discount store. No, David's bridal got some bad shit that be in other rooms that aren't on the floor. Do you understand? They did back then and they do now. It just depends on what you know and who you know. David's Bridal, I I couldn't go and use like the regular dressing rooms, but they would actually, you know, my girls, they were cool. They said, come on, uh -uh. but as soon as they see me, they'd be like, uh-uh, James, come on, we got something for you in the back. And, but I would always, they would always take me and separate me and put me out and I would try things on. But that, they were cool. But it's again, there were other stores, they knew me too, but you couldn't try things on. You could do your thing. And I'm talking, we're back seven, eight, nine hundred dollar dresses. You know, to your other customer that's out there trying to buy a hundred and thirty dollar dress and doesn't want to pay for any alterations. They want to take it home and have the girl downstairs altered for twenty bucks. You know what I mean? Or people trying to buy dresses and call me. And want me to alter them for them for little of nothing. And here I'm dropping five, six hundred dollars on a dress. But you can't try it on. It again, life is not fair. It is what it is. But again, with the fact that I design and I sell a lot of my stuff, I didn't have to deal with a lot of that stuff. You know what I mean? And again, I found stores that they were cool. David's though, there's a David's that they were really cool. Like I said, they would, when they said, be like, I'm James, come on, we got some stuff for you and it would be shit that's not on the floor. Anyway, but so yeah, that was all, that was all a fantasy, honey. That was all done. That was very dynasty. I was like, oh, child. I sat through it, but I was like, mm. it was, it was starting to wear, that, that, that stuff is starting to wear on me. When it gets too far out, I'd be like, child, that's, what are we, what's the lesson that we're teaching? Because people were taking this stuff and they believed you in the beginning. They believed you about what was going on. And and the reviewers, like me, I know some of the stuff when I told you all in the beginning in season one, that sounds outlandish, but no babies, that really happened. 
the whole U-Haul stuff and the busting out the window and mopping the store. That stuff really happened. But anyway, she reads this man down, okay? And they leave the store. And then the guy, Dominic, he tells Dominic, get ready. Go ahead and get ready for your, um, for your next client. And Dominic's like, you get ready for next client. I quit. Now, that might have happened in that before. But yeah, he, he quit. And, but I doubt that too. If Dominic would have got a job in there now, Dominic would have kind of just kept his job. I, he probably wouldn't have quit. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, she told that man leaving out the door, that damn uh, Electra told him, you have not heard the last of me. Watch your neck. I said, oh, bitch. <laughs> so I was like, Lord have mercy. So that's that. She goes on. In the meantime, in between time, Poppy done had a visit from his ex-girlfriend's sister. She done come and let him know that the ex done passed on, you know, she was a junkie. She OD'd and then passed away, child. But in the meantime, she done had a baby. This baby is now five years old. It's his son and he's a junior. Poppy's like, oh, I wrap my shit up all the time. And she's like, she wasn't loose like that. She ain't messing with nobody else. And he looks like you, Poppy. He's it. Okay. Poppy goes and sees the baby. Cute little boy. He's so cute. And, you know, Poppy tells him, you know, you can call me Poppy. And I actually, I have the same name as you and everything. And he told me, he's like, you know, my mom told me not to talk to strangers. Like, I'm not a stranger. I know you and I know your family. You know, this, that, thing, any other. But he has this baby. I said, okay. Cool. No problem. No problem. Anyway. On the other side of what's going on, Lecture goes and sees the fellas, honey, and she lets them know, I need something handled. And they're like, no problem, Lecture. And she told them, she says, um, I don't want any violence. I don't want any violence. But I want that store mopped. I want it mopped. See, it'll be too easy for me and my girls to go through and do. We can go in there and mop it. But that'll be too easy, and then, you know, we'll shine back on. I said, I, I can't have that. I'm running a business. But I want you to go in and mop that store. Steal every dress in the bitch. And then, you know, you can take it and sell it. Y'all can do work, you know, work your magic in the background and sell all the dresses and make a fancy little profit selling them hot. And they were like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Cool, no problem. You know, so that was that. But then I still said, mm, okay, all right, whatever. And like when they asked her, said, you sure you ain't Italian? Because, you know, she cut throats. She told that motherfucker, you watch your neck, honey. But anyway, so that was that whole thing. Then they give this bachelorette party. This was really over the top. They have, they didn't rent it out this room, this ballroom. You got all of the trans girls from the, from the ballroom. And, you know, some... They liked and did something they didn't like. It was rubbing in their face. But all the trans girls got to come to the bachelorette party. And that's when Alex, Electra tells them, um, you know, it's all going to be, everybody's going to have the wedding gown of their choice. And they can all wear them to the wedding. I said, oh, okay, this is going too much. So we know that the store been mobbed. See, this is what I said. It was, going, it was getting stupid. We know the store been mopped. We've seen the guys go in and mop the store. Okay? But now you got stolen dresses. And now you want to take and have all the trans girls. Let me take it. Edit that out, chow. You, get, you, have, you want to take all of the trans girls. Put them all in one place with all these stolen ass dresses on. And you think it ain't never going to get back to you. This big old wedding that's supposed to be taking place. Now, you know that's going to surface like a hot fire. And listen, listen, I told you all the story once before about someone who mopped a gown. This happened, honey. Somebody who mopped a gown wore it in a pageant and the police was at the pageant. And caught him coming off stage during the evening wear segment, honey, of the pageant and gave the bitch clink, clink. So now you want me to believe that y'all are going to mop a whole 
high-end wedding store, put all these gowns on these whores, and then be in one place. Ryan, who do you think you're talking to? This and I was I I got completely disconnected. That scene, and then they went to the strip club. Was it the gay strip club? Or was this a regular strip club? I just became disconnected. I, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I became disconnected and I was done. I was finished with this whole episode at that point. But whatever. Let's just roll. Let's roll with it. So, Poppy goes home. Angel comes home from the bachelorette party. And he tells her what's up, what happened. Angel snaps out. And so, I can't, I can't, mm -mm, I can't. And he's like, beg he ended up on his knees literally begging her. Like, no, like, don't make me choose between you. And, and then he's like, where are you going? She's like, I'm leaving, Bobby. I got... Now, the reality of things is the fact that Angel is a goofy bitch. So I could see Angel actually doing that completely. And I could see Poppy begging her and all that. And I could see this being the thing to break Angel and Poppy up. Totally. But it doesn't even make sense, Angel. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Let the man have his child. He wants to take care of his child. The child is not, I mean, it wouldn't be an issue. The child is not in the system. The child does, there is no mother, so there's no baby mama drama. Um, child, you got to do is just go on and raise the baby. You ain't got to do shit. Let him raise his baby. Because he, cause he already know that you just goofy and you ain't going to be worth a fucking quarter. I just was like, girl, she, girl, you're going to screw up your whole life about your selfish, self-centered bullshit. You say you love him. He got a baby. Let's roll. It is what it is. But that that's where you go. I mean, now that's real. You, it tests, do you really love me? Or you love what I do for you? Are you willing to love me through me having an issue? Because see, up to this point, Poppy ain't had no issues. All the issues belong to Angel. You a junkie. You immature as hell. You self-centered as a mother. You've always brought all the drama. So now he got one little situation and you can't stand it. Do you really love Poppy like you say you do? Or you love what Poppy does for you? Angel, get out of my face. Get out of my face, Angel. But anyway, that's where we actually ended out at. And then I see some some previews for next week, and I know they're gonna piss me off next week. So y'all might as well get ready, y'all. If you want to be mad at me, it's okay. I'm telling you now, I'm gonna drag the writers next week. I already know I am, but still love the show. I still love the show. Nothing against the show. I still love the show, but I am I'm in the headspace now that yes, it's time for pose to be gone. And I'm okay. I think I'm okay with it now. I think I'm okay with it now. But it's cool. But I'll see y'all back here next Sunday. Be mad. Ball your fist up. I don't give a shit. They don't have to be real with their writing. I'm going to be real with my reviewing. Trust. See y'all next week.